Princess Beatrice and her husband Edoardo Mopelli Mozzi welcomed baby Sienna Elizabeth on September 19. The couple had been living in St. James's Palace since their wedding in July 2020 but reportedly relocated to the Cotswolds, shortly after the birth of their daughter. The eldest daughter of the Duke and Duchess of York will not only be able to count more privacy but also on the several relatives living nearby. According to Vanity Fair Italy, Beatrice and Edardo settled on a 3 million property boasting a pool and tennis courts, as well as more privacy for their young daughters and Edo's young son Wolfie. In addition to the entrepreneur's parents living in the Cotswolds, the young couple can also count on the support of Princess Anne, who's based in Gatcombe Park in Gloucestershire. The Princess Royal's children, Zara Tyndall and Peter Phillips, also live on the property with their families. Prince Charles can also be found escaping to Gloucestershire with Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall to his beloved Highgrove, in Tetbury. Princess Beatrice, while not a working member of the royal family, is very active in supporting her charities and could maintain St. James's Palace as her official working residence. She would not be the first member of the royal family to hold multiple residences. Princess Anne also has her work office at St. James's Palace although she spends the majority of her time in Gloucestershire. Prince Charles has his own official residence at Clarence House in London and will likely make Buckingham Palace his office once he succeeds the Queen. Prince William and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge normally work from apartment 1A at Kensington Palace but are known to escape to their country pile in Norfolk, Anmer Hall, with their children. Beatrice previously shared her home with her younger sister Princess Eugenie, who moved to Prince Harry's home at Frogmore Cottage in Windsor following the birth of her son August Philip Hawke in February 2021. Princess Alexandra, a fraternal cousin to the Queen, also has a grace and favour apartment at St. James's Palace. St. James's Palace remains the official residence of the British monarch despite Queen Victoria moving the majority of her court to Buckingham Palace in 1837. The Queen's official royal court is still officially known as the Court of St. James's and all foreign ambassadors and diplomats are accredited by the court rather than the British government. Sophie Raworth has been announced as the interim presenter of BBC One TMS flagship Sunday morning programme, known to viewers as The Andrew Marsh Show. The BBC said Ms. Raworth, 53, would present the programme, temporarily titled Sunday Morning, from January 9. The news follows Mr. Ma TMS recent announcement that he is leaving the BBC after more than two decades. Mr. Ma is leaving the broadcaster to present a show on LBC and become the new statesman's chief political commentator. When announcing his departure, Mr. Ma said, I think British politics and public life are going to go through an even more turbulent decade, and as ITM Vey said, I am keen to get my own voice back. Ms. Raworth has worked for the BBC since 1992, presenting the news at 6. She also headed a documentary in 2015, which focused on the reigns of Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Victoria titled The Longest Reign. But Amy Burns reviewed the programme for The Independent, and hit out at the BBC, and Ms. Raworth for a lack of criticism of the two queens. Ms. Burns wrote, Elizabeth, Sophie excitedly told us, had the common touch from day one. Why? Because she was raised by normal Scottish nannies. Of course, who wasn't? And Victoria, who following her husband's death in 1861 barely set foot out in public, was always working tirelessly behind the scenes, we were assured. If ever there was a family with a Hollywood history, it's this one. But the BBC did its damned finest to cover it up. Not one mention was given to the multiple assassination attempts that Victoria survived. And while it was nice to see Sophie dutifully following and impeccably turned out Elizabeth around on her state duties, from a polite distance, of course, I wanted to hear more about her renegade uncle, Edward VIII, who dramatically abdicated so he could marry the American divorce copyright E. Wallace Simpson. Ms. Burns added that Ms. Raworth was sycophantic to the royals during the documentary, and the stories were presented in such a smug, one-sided manner glossing over great swathes of history in the process, it was close to unbearable viewing. 
In 2015, Ms. Raworth spoke to Royal Central, discussing the monarchy. Asked what her favorite royal story to cover was during her career, she said Prince William and Kate's wedding in 2011. Ms. Raworth said, ITM Vey covered many now in my years at the BBC, from the Queen Mother TMS funeral to the Queen TMS Golden and Diamond Jubilees, as well as the Children TMS party at the Palace and the Queen TMS 80th birthday celebrations. It TMS hard to single out one but I think the wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge is one of the most memorable. I was in a studio opposite the entrance to Westminster Abbey, with a bird TMSI view of the events. The crowds were incredible. Around 20 million people were tuned in that day, as well as much more around the world. Hugh Edwards and I were allowed into the Abbey the day before to watch the preparations. I TMLL never forget the scent in the Abbey from all the flowers and the trees that had been brought in there. Ms. Raworth was also asked to compare Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Victoria's reigns, focusing on the challenges they faced. She said, both Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth have reigned through quite different periods of remarkable change. For Victoria, it was the age of empire and the industrial revolution, for Elizabeth, an age of mass communication, technology with far greater freedom for people and greater tolerances in society. Queen Elizabeth is also a monarch who has been able to travel extensively, in sharp contrast to Victoria, who was the figurehead of an empire, and Empress of India, which she did in TMT visit. A poll of 85,90 express readers, held throughout November, 97% of voters said Kate and William should not stay with Harry and Meghan in an upcoming US trip. Voters thought family controversies of recent years had not yet healed enough for the reunion. Eleonora said the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge should not stay with people they can't trust and relax around. A source told Heat World that Meghan and Harry will be inviting William and Kate, along with their three children, to stay at their 11.5 million home in Santa Barbara, California. The insider said, they Haven TMT had a single royal visitor since moving to America, which they know is mainly because of COVID, but now that travel restrictions between the US and UK have been lifted, they want that to change. They added, they TM re certain that there would be no better way for them to put aside their differences than by spending quality time together in the California sunshine, away from the meddling and negativity they would have to encounter in England. And Meghan feels that they would be playing by her rules because they would be in her home and her home country. But dozens of readers thought the atmosphere between the two couples was too toxic and that they should keep their distance. The British public have had little indication from Kate and William on the state of their relationship with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. But royal author Robert Lacey said their relationship remains poor and that there is no immediate possibility of a reconciliation. In October, William hosted a party to thank those who helped in erecting a statue of Princess Diana, which was unveiled at Kensington Palace in the summer but Harry did not attend. Mr Lacey told Page Six, ITM they spoken to two people from that party, and it was quite clear from things he said that his anger towards Harry remains. The Sussexes have claimed to have a good relationship with the Queen, and Princess Beatrice. Whether the royal brothers will be able to move forward from their feud, sparked by Harry TMS claims that William is trapped, remains unclear. Voter, Eddie SMTH, wrote, I bet Wills and Kate would rather stay in a motel. Professor David Young said staying with Meghan and Harry would be letting down Her Majesty the Queen and the country. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments section below. Get unrivaled royal coverage on Britain's most fascinating family with the Daily Express Royal Briefing, sent straight to your inbox. Sign up for free here.